we're tasting our plum wine after one year of aging. This came out at 1.038 final gravity and it's 8.4%. And we're using the new scorecards. If you haven't seen these yet, which you probably haven't because this might be the first video you see with them. I don't know, it might be the second video you see with them. We now do four different categories for our tasting and we give a score on that and it's a little narrower score range. So I think it actually gives a better idea to the viewer what we're experiencing. And I think I might've literally gotten a paper cut from the scorecard. Oh my gosh, on your chin. Yeah, I whipped it around and wow, Don't I felt it that. right there. That, that just kind of hurts. All right, anyway. So the first thing that we wanna talk about is the appearance. And for that, we look at clarity. We look at the color of it. It's so pretty. Is there floaters? Is there anything no. that we don't want? Like, does it have an eyeball staring back at me? Nope. This is ruby red, beautifully it's clear. A thing of beauty. It is actually a gorgeous color. In Let the me glass, it see is. See if I can show you. Gorgeous. All right. So here we are, a little up close on it, just to give you an idea of what that looks like. I mean, that is just gorgeous clarity. So I have a question. Since we're new to this scoring, are we scoring simply the appearance in the glass, or are we taking into account what happened in the bottle? That's up to you. That's up to you. I'm going to leave that to your discretion. I would say the glass, because yeah, that's okay. weirdness in the bottle. I really don't know why there's all this goop up here. So it, it created, now you remember, we poured from this, so like the level was actually up here. Mm -hmm. um, but it did leave some of some residue. the residue at the top, and there is a significant amount of fallout on the bottom. Which is strange, because we've been doing the let them sit for months before we bought it. But I'm not sure we did it to this, this We one. did, I remember Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so that was a little weird, but it's common for at least the sediment on the bottom to happen, even in commercial wines. This one has quite a bit, though. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like a, a good quarter inch or more. Uh, that's a little more than usual, but But hey, in the glass... Happens. Yeah, in the glass, it's absolutely It is so beautiful. appealing. I gave it a five. Yeah, me too. I'm totally a five for appearance. Now on to aroma. And this is where we're looking for odd smells, things that shouldn't be there, or good smells, things that should be there. Wow. <laughs> that is just sweet and fruity smelling. I could wear this as a cologne. Plummy, jammy. <laughs> yeah, this is lovely. It's rich, it's dark, it's heady. Actually, it's a cherry. It's enveloping. It's like a warm, fuzzy blanket on a cold day. Yeah. There is, uh, you take deep, like, full-on breaths, and there is nothing the bad. The only negative I can even say is that it, it doesn't have a, a strong aroma. Like, it's not, it's not powerful. It's kind of weak. You have to reach for it a little bit. It's there, and what's there is gorgeous, but it doesn't have a powerful. I gave it a five. I gave it a four. Um, I went four because I think... You really have to put your schnoz way in there to, to get much off of it. I mean, it smells great. What I get smells great, but I just, I would like more aroma, more more volatile aroma to come off of it. Right. I'm being picky. Fair but, enough. But yeah, it does smell really great. Yeah, and I'm doing all the techniques of single nostril, mouth closed, I mean, mouth I got my open, nose almost touching it. Though. Everything, and it everything is good. It's it smells good. great. Yeah, there's no, nothing, nothing off putting in any way. Okay, flavor. This is personal bias. This I remember. It has an odd uh, mouth drying effect from the tartness. Yeah. That doesn't match the flavor or the aroma no, at all. No, it does not match the smell at all. What you smell and what you taste are completely different. The aroma things. makes you think you're going to get a rich, velvety, almost chocolatey, creamy. Oh, you see, I get totally light dark. and sweet and fruity. Oh. From okay. The, from the aroma. That's what I mean. Like the aroma to me is kind of light. And the flavor is really high on tannins. I don't know that it's tannin. I think it's tartness. It's acidity. Uh, I'm, getting I'm getting a lot of mouth pucker too. Mouth though. pucker yeah. drying my tongue in a yeah. desert. All right. That's tannins to me. Maybe it's both. Because it's definitely tart and acidic. And I think we're getting a lot of tannin too. So yeah, you're you're right. It's both. It's both. Um, it's tart. It's tannin. It's both. Do I hate it? No, I actually no, I really enjoy it. it. Now that my brain is like, oh, this is what we're gonna get. At first, there's just like, what's going on? Uh, particularly when I was inhaling that lovely aroma. So 
This is going to be difficult to judge. Not for me. All right, what did you give it for flavor? I gave it a three. I gave it a two. And I was bouncing back and forth between a three and a four because I do enjoy the flavor, even though it's not matching how much I enjoy the aroma. Uh, and there's nothing off to me. There's no funk or foot no, note. No, no, I agree. It's just unexpected and, again, not as appealing as the aroma. I'm, right, go I'm going with my score of two being below average for flavor for me. It's not really something I would probably reach for. Wouldn't be my favorite. Um, I can see why you appreciate it and there are things to appreciate about it. Yeah. But for me, it's below average. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call this good. Below average. All right. The last category is intent. Now, that means if someone handed us a glass and said, I made this, or here's some plum wine, <laughs> does what you experience from it match the intent? That's why we call it intent. And that means taking everything into account. That's appearance, aroma, flavor, enjoyment, all the stuff. Does this make you say, yep, that's a plum wine? Now, because I remember what we were actually trying to do with this, and I remember all the research that I did mm. after the fact, uh, yeah, no, this, is, this was not our intent. <laughs> We were intending to make like the Japanese style. Yeah, and that's dessert, a whole different thing. Dessert. It's a S whole different thing. Plum wine, and th this is not that. No, it's not at, at all. all. So I give it a one. Me too. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna add up our scores. Be right back. All right, so time for the big reveal. What was your final score? My final score was 14 out of 20. Mine was 12 out of 20. The minimum score is four, max is 20. So this gives a good range. I like this scoring system. Do you see what's happening here? We gave all kinds of notes on this. She liked it. I really didn't like it that much, but it still got It still has some positive qualities yeah, about it. Yeah. So It looks gorgeous. It looks gorgeous. It smells amazing. And, and then we, yeah. we go off the pet rails. But knowing what we know now, we could make this again. And I think too, we used the wrong kind of plums. We yep. used the wrong method. We did, you know, yep. everything we did was the wrong, wrong way to make a, make a Japanese plum <laughs> wine. Did we make a plum wine? Uh, sure. Yeah, it has a really weird flavor and it's not vinegar, it's nothing like that. It's literally like almost too much tannin and too tart. That's the, the easiest de description I can give it. Right, but I compared this with food, no problem. So this bottle will be gone probably by the end of the day. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Not my thing. I probably won't drink any of it. But let us know what you think of that new scoring system because we're going to start doing this for all of our one years. And yes, you heard it right. We're considering doing live shows, but maybe not for tastings. We're still not 100% certain on that. But yep. yeah, let us know your thoughts on what you'd like to see in a live show. And just keep in mind one thing. If you want us to do a live show, the idea is to interact with you. So if you tell us to make a brew or something like that, we can't do that and interact. Yeah. So to me, that's pointless as a live show. But, you know, grab something that we haven't drank in three years. Now you're talking. Now we can talk about that and share the experience with you. We can even do... a. Uh tastes on demand. Like if you know what we've already yeah. made, yeah. if we have one available and say, That's hey, could cool you try idea. this and talk about it? I could it? even put out a poll we can, we can totally and say, that. we have all these things. Yeah. What would you like to see us drink? That might be cool. And if you if you have it, you can drink along with us. But yeah. uh, this is starting to get a little bit it long is. for this video. So um, as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>